The market, it's been strong, but was an emergency break just hit? We're gonna talk about the good and some ugly when it comes to this week's market report for February 13th. And as always, we're gonna start with seeing what happened in the condo and single family market. And it was a little bit of a weird week as we came off of uh, last week where we had such strong data. Now, the big story is with interest rates. And I wanna keep this PG, but boy, do I wanna let out some expletives. And as always, we're not only gonna talk about what happened in the interest rate market, but we're gonna talk about what why? Which brings us to some economic news. And for the luxury segment, we're headed to the back bay to take a look at a unit in Mandarin Oriental. It's an amazing place. Hi, I'm Jeff Chubb. I'm a recovering investment banker turned real estate agent. I've sold more than a thousand houses. If you have any questions about the current real estate market, then know I'm here to help. Now let's start with the single family market. There are currently 2,913 units on the market. Now this is a decrease of nearly 13% in the last 28 days. 13%. The amount of more inventory that a buyer has to look at today when compared compared to today last year is up slightly to 984 units. And this is compared to last week's 958 units. Now the takeaway here is that inventory is very tight. We had 585 new listings come on the market this week. This is far below the 888 that we saw this week last year, but 34% below actually to be exact. Now the four week rolling average for the new listings is 568 units. So we're definitely in line with that though. We had 726 homes go under agreement and there continues to be a pretty large disparity in the under agreements to new listings. We continue to just put more houses under agreement that are coming on the market. And this is a great thing for sellers. However, when we compare this week to last year, then we are currently 31% behind on those pending numbers when 1,057 units went under agreement. There were 305 homes that closed last week for an average sales price of $671,000 and a median sales price of $500,000. Months of inventory. This is how we determine what type of market that we're in. Zero to five months is considered a seller's market, but the closer you get to zero, the stronger and more aggressive of a seller's market it is. So this week, months of inventory, it stayed flat for the third week in a row at 1.16 months. This continues to indicate that it's a very strong seller's market. First, seller's advantage. I have mentioned it before. I think it could be more important than ever with what happened in the interest rate market this week. Sellers who are contemplating selling this spring might want to consider coming to the market earlier. If this is you, then reach out to me and let's talk about your specific situation and see if it makes sense. It could be the difference of thousands, if not tens of thousands of dollars more into your pocket. So under the condo market, we have 1,744 condos currently on the market as of Monday. Now inventory went down by four units. So the last two weeks, inventory has gone up by 10 units and then down by four units. Yeah, I think we can call this inventory levels they remain flat. Now the amount of additional inventory that a buyer has to look at today versus today last year decreased slightly to 304 units compared to last week's 316 units. There were 365 newly listed condos that came on the market this week and the four week rolling average has been 332 units. So this was a solid week for new listings. It was however still 34% behind last year's numbers when we had 554 units come on the market. We had 378 condos go under agreement this week well above the last four week rolling average of 322 units but 31 percent below this week's last year when 544 condos went under agreement. Very interesting that actually the condo market and the single family market were both 34 percent below on new listings and 31 percent below on properties that went under agreement. Now there were 136 condos that sold this week for an average sales price of $643,000 and a median sales price of $434,000. Then that months of inventory actually went up to 1.69 months from last week's 1.67 months. Do you like hearing about what's going on in the Massachusetts real estate market? If so, then I appreciate you hitting that like button as it makes a huge difference to those YouTube gods. And by the way, subscribing, that doesn't hurt either. Let's talk about mortgages because that is where the real news of the week is. I have had to increase my Prilosec intake due to these mortgage rates. I miss boring mortgage rate weeks, quite frankly. So what has happened? It all started towards the end of last week. The Fed chair started talking and their meeting minutes started coming out. Okay, the market, it absorbed all that relatively well. Things were flat. Then the jobs report came out. They printed a $571,000 number versus the expected $185,000 number. That spooked the markets. Interest rates increased last week and all eyes then turned to today and that consumer price index. Month over month, they hit the expectations of 0.5% but year over year showed a 6.4% increase versus the expected 6.2% increase. So what does all this mean? Essentially, it's an indicator that inflation ticked up. Inflation means that the Fed, they're gonna need to keep raising interest rates for longer and might have to be more aggressive in a month. What does all that mean? Well, I've talked about an inverted yield curve often. This inverted yield curve has been helping to keep that 10-year treasury and thereby our mortgage rates on the lower side. People expected that the Fed would need to start cutting rates sooner rather than 
than later. And this data is jeopardizing that inverted yield curve. And that is why we've seen interest rates go up in the last two weeks. The question at this point is how far are they going to go up? And what will that ultimately do to buyer demand? So far today, they've stayed, they've gone up and then they kind of went back down and they've stayed relatively flat. But it is expected that by the time the markets shake everything out, that we are going to see interest rates start increasing again. As I've said before, this market is fragile. It was starting to feel like the seller side of the market was taking off. A run in interest rates could be like someone hitting that emergency brake and chop buyer demand down to size could be. Let's check out buyer demand again. Again, this is not a perfect chart. It's catching the amount of showings through a showing coordination company for listings that they manage for properties in the I-95 quarter in Massachusetts. But there's no doubt that there's a trend of decreasing activity. Kind of goes in line as to when we started seeing interest rates tick up. Talking out loud here, I'm going to work on this data for next week to do a year over year comparison to really see what we're dealing with here. Just one more piece of data to help us with our projections as we move forward in the new year. Now, let's take a look at the penthouse 2B at 776 Boylston Street in the Back Bay. Now, this unit is located at the Mandarin Oriental and spans 3,708 square feet. It's a three bedroom, three and a half bath condo on the 14th floor of the building. The condo has some exceptional views of Boston from inside as well as out, considering they have 36 floor to ceiling windows that encompass 80 linear feet of glass and thereby all the city views that come with it. The condo has custom woodwork throughout with soaring ceilings and open floor plans. Amazing chef's kitchen with high-end appliances, expansive island pantry, and wine storage. The outdoor space consists of two terraces plus an elevator to another private roof deck, which totals about 1,000 square feet. All of this plus two car garage parking and all the amenities that the five-star hotel of Mandarin Oriental has to offer, including the fitness center and spa. Now, the seller's asking price is $15,750,000. Want to talk about your own personal real estate needs? My information, it's in the description below. You can also visit me at www.youtuberealestateagent.com, fill in your information, and then I am going to reach out to you. Whichever way is easiest for you. I love to talk about real estate. So whether you're looking to buy or sell a home in the next nine or 90 days, then I would love to chat with you and just find out a little bit more about your real estate goals. Questions or comments about any of this market data, then drop me a line in the comments section below. You take the time to watch the video, so I'm always going to take the time to answer your questions. And as I always say, an informed person, well, they're a powerful person. So until next time.